What is good, everybody? Nice to see all of y'all in here. Oh, I'm actually really excited for this one. Let me turn on my camera. Okay, there we go. Nice to see all of y'all. I know you guys have been waiting for this class as I have been. And we're going to heavily talk about everything astral travel. Now, to briefly touch on everything that we're going to go into, I want to say this. Astral projection, we're going to talk about astral travel and astral projection. Projection is leaving your body. Travel is traveling the astral realm, which could be in multiple different ways. Now, I have actually been traveling with some of y'all recently, and it was like a, it's like a test run to see like what it feels like, how things are going, things we need to know for next time, things like that. Yeah, I've been very much practicing with some of y'all. So I'm curious if any of y'all remember anything, but um, I have been going around a bit and it's been really fun. Now, I will say this. Know the difference between traveling and projecting. Projecting, you're leaving your body. And we do this essentially like every night. We're traveling outside of our body. But there's also astral traveling, which a lot of people call remote viewing. Or you are like dreaming is essentially astral travel or astral projection. So I say traveling, a key thing with traveling is remote viewing. So essentially traveling the astral realm without having to leave your body so we're going to talk about both and how to do both okay um i'm actually going to should i give okay i'm going to give you all this my guy's giving the green light okay so i'm going to share my screen here real fast to show you all what i'm talking about so this website is a very sacred website one that i found years ago and that helped me a while so i'm going to hand you all this right here this is Kind of a classified website. Classified meaning it's for the star seeds and nobody else. So you guys could take a look at this when you want to on your spare time. They talk about time, dreams, dream states, dimensions. Like this is a very powerful website that you can't find unless someone knows someone that knows someone that knows someone. So hope you guys enjoy that. And let's actually take a picture at, let's actually look at Astro projection let's see what happens when you look it up and this is all for a purpose okay the ability of a person's spirit to travel to distant places i'm going to teach you guys a way that's going to help you long term to travel long term because you you go around you hear people being like oh, you could travel outside your body if you do this meditation and you can do this but then you're realizing like it's not working and everybody's always texting me saying that they're not working because you're going about it the wrong way Yes, you can actually travel if you close your eyes and go like this and you could pop out. That's possible. But that's actually not the way I do it. I do it at night. Now, when I first started astral traveling, this was years ago. I was in grade eight and I was obsessed with astral travel, not knowing that it was going to be a big role in my life. I'm like, this thing I want to do so damn bad. And I had all this list of all the stuff I wanted to do. I had a whole binder full of information. And I remember I would tell my family, I'm like, you guys got to be quiet. I'm going to astral travel now. And I'd make the whole house be quiet. And I'd go try upstairs at the cottage. I'd go upstairs and be like, y'all got to be quiet because I'm going to go travel. And it never worked. But my guides told me, I remember this is the time I didn't really talk to my guides deeply because I didn't fully understand how it all worked. But I heard a message. I got a clear message. And it said, Focus on lucid dreaming and you'll go farther in astral projection. And I was like, okay, I'm down, but I don't want to do that. Like, I want to just pop up my body. And every time I'd read this one book, which is Bomb My Astral Travel, it's by, I'm looking at it right now. Her name is Erin Pavlina. Bomb book. I'm going to type her, near, her name right here. Her, she's the first astral projection book I ever, ever read in my life. Bomb book. And she does some astral warrior stuff up in there. So, you know, we like that a lot. And so um, the way she also travels is through lucid dreaming. She's like, I focus on lucid dreaming. And I was like, I'm tired of hearing this. Like, I just want to do it the raw way. But actually, now that I focus on lucid dreaming, I have actually gotten farther than I did if I didn't focus on lucid dreaming. But let me tell you something. You guys are traveling every night. Every night you're going somewhere. And you notice that they're very like, let's put it like this. When you're dreaming, see it as like offline game. Like if you're playing Minecraft offline and you're in your own world, you're in your own um, energy matrix. But when you astral travel, you're going online. So you're going to be experiencing other things that are not just within your energetic field. So when you're dreaming and you talk to a character, you're like, you know, you're just a dream character, right? And it's like, I know. 
or I'll get mad. Most of the time they'll just be like, I know. And then they just go about their life. It's because they're spirits. So spirits are essentially like, um, they're their own consciousness spirits, but they are, they're an intelligent energy. So when you're dreaming, you're astral, you're astral traveling, you're astral projecting, you're traveling outside of your physical body and you're fully aware of the astral. Remote viewing is when you close your eyes and you travel somewhere. And I used to call it mind travel. You close your eyes and you're going there and you're seeing stuff. And I want to do a little test run if you guys want to do a little practice around after this. Don't let me forget. I'm going to let you guys remote view my room if you guys want to see something, okay? So I'll let you guys practice in a minute. But for now, I want you to understand that when you are dreaming, yes, you're still traveling outside your body. Remote viewing, you are traveling the astral while you're still in your physical body. So it's like you're half, you're half in, half out, which is why they just call it astral traveling. When you close your eyes, you, you guys already noticed you can see a lot of the astral realm within your mind all the time. As an as a intuitive person, you see energies. A lot of times you don't see them, but you see them and you know. And you creep yourself out sometimes because you know stuff that you shouldn't. And that's how you know, like, you're like, okay, it's, it's, this is all real. Like, there's no doubt. Everybody here is like, there's no doubt this is real. But like, we struggle to start to be able to remote view when it's time to remote view because you lack the trust for yourself. But that's okay because you're going to learn how to build trust, which is why I say you can remote view on your spare time practice and get, um, uh, what do they call it? Confirmation. So when you go to sleep, you're like, I'm going to be traveling somewhere tonight. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to travel somewhere. Or I want to travel here, blank. And you say where you want to go and you're going to go there. I'm going to tell you guys a few stories in a minute. You could do that and you have a dream journal right when you get up. I have it in my phone now and I just, I just audio. Like I'll be in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll be like, I went to Mars and then Mars looked like this and I'm so tired. And I do it right when I'm still half and half out the astral. So I can remember everything or else I'm going to forget. If you, you guys see, if you wait, then you forget, right? Even if it's a few minutes after you wake up. So if you do this, you're showing yourself that you are ready to incorporate your life into the astral realm. You're ready to remember because this is a muscle, literally. And almost all you've been having a lot of third eye activity. You notice your third eye just pulsing a lot. It's the, it's the solar flares. And you've been feeling tired. It's the solar flares. So everybody's going through this right now with the solar flares and there's more to come. But now all you are here because you're ready to actual travel a lot more. If you're sleeping a lot, like Rainwater said right there, shout out to my homegirl. You're sleeping a lot. Go to sleep and actual travel. Like, I don't know if I'm in a dream or if I'm going to actual travel. No matter what, I'm traveling outside my physical body. Let's do this. So you may remember some, may remember a lot. You guys want to tell you a story real quick? Okay. So I went to astral school a few nights ago and a bunch of my family was there. And my, my home girl, Cecilia, a Spanish girl, you guys probably see on my snap story. She was there too. And I looked at Cecilia. I'm like, yo, you're here too. But I was like, she ain't going to remember none of this, right? She ain't going to remember this. But I was just like, I was just like, oh, nice to see you, right? And we're in a school. The astral, well, you notice when you go to astral school, it's literally at a school, but like a school that's just in the astral. And you're way up. We were way up in the mountains. Long story short, we were there for a few days. At the end, there was a final exam. And the exam was you had to make your way down to the beach at the bottom of the mountain. You had to make it down there. It looked like Jamaica, man, like the hill. You're all the way up here and you see the mountain, mountain, and then the beach right over Dessa. It was just like that. And so I actually wanna I wanna put it up here. Um Jamaica mountain and let's see if it's gonna know what i'm talking about and some of you were here too i'm curious if any of you remember it was just like this boy just like this like imagine the school's just at the top and then the beach is down there and they were like you have to make your way down to the beach and they were like they were just smiling though because they knew everybody was just gonna start booking it right just start going but i said wait a second and i found my home girl and we went back up to our hotel room or our our area that we were staying in in the astral in the school is like dorms went up to the dorms and we put on our running shoes i was like let me put on my running shoes because i ain't running no damn flip-flops and i put on my running shoes and then it's like i was getting my energy together and we looked at each other and we're like we're gonna do this just like how we did in lyra and we're like let's go and we knew we were just gonna start running through the forest like how we did lifetimes ago when we were so hyped i my alarm went off and i woke up and i snapped back into the physical in the middle of me running and I woke up and I was like, <sighs> and I was like trying to catch my breath. I was like, whoa, that was a, that was a wild one. And it's like, we were running from something, but I don't remember what it was. And then I go to the gym later and already her guides talking about her third eye being really 
uh, potent stuff like that and stuff she's going through. So it's like, whoa, your third eye is really active right now. And she was like, yeah, I feel this pressure right here. And I've been traveling a lot. And last night I was, I felt like I was running. Like I was running with somebody. We were going through something. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, whoa, you remember? And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, we went to Asha school together and we was running like we was we was going in the forest and she was like oh my god that explains that da, 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 da. and she went into it but she's not like she's not the type to astral travel a lot but when she does like when we do it together she's just like just like yeah like it makes sense like it kind of clicks right but after that i was like wow it's like she got more awareness as to where i told her i was like i didn't think you would remember but you have awareness so Little things like that. Asha School teaches me a lot. I love going there. And I notice it's always like dorms. Like you go there, you're sleeping there. You're there for like a really long time. And then you come back with all this knowledge. That is why I recommend Astral Schools. But if you guys want to talk about that more in Astral Arenas, don't let me forget. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I do want to touch on things that are really important first. So if you go to bed every night and you're saying, okay, I'm aware I travel all the time. I may not remember. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If you're just aware, you're going to be traveling. Every time you wake up, you're like, I traveled. I did this, this, and that. You're showing your, you're literally working out your third eye muscle. Dead ass, your third eye muscle. You're showing yourself, I want to, re I'm traveling these realms with purpose and I need to remember. Now, don't be surprised if you get a little bit of headaches um, or you're just like, you're almost tired of traveling. You wake up and you're like, like, man, I, I think I just want to sleep after this. Like, I, I just want to, I don't want to travel. I just want to sleep. And you tell yourself you wouldn't say that, but, but you will. It's like you're getting tired. You're getting, you're training yourself. You're training your third eye. You're training your astral body. You're training. So from now on, every night you go to sleep, you won't even have to try. You're like, I'm going to be astral traveling, right? Like, it's no doubt. So if you do this every night, you're going to build that muscle. You can try to do meditation where you pop out and you project. Like some of y'all have literally had where it's just like you're outside your body, you're like, whoa, when you see your body, that's possible. You could do that. But a lot of, most of y'all, 85% of y'all are going to do it the way that we usually do. You go to sleep and you'll have awareness. And the reason why they say lucid dreaming is because you're just becoming aware that you're traveling. I rather call it, I, I rather call it, um, what's it called? Lucid traveling, lucid projection, lucid traveling. So you're becoming aware when you are traveling. It gets to the point where you you become so aware, you're like, yeah, I'm in the astral. And you're like, okay, well, I'm here for a purpose. There's no more honeymoon phase. You're like, oh my God. You're just like, a, all right, we're in the astral. What do we want to do? What are we going to do? So that's what's going to happen when you focus on lucid dreaming. Now let's touch quickly on remote viewing. Actually, let me answer some of these questions first. Let me read what some of y'all have said. I think Rainwater said, I think I went to that same astral school because I remember going to school and it was in the mountains and there was a beach too. Yeah, you was there. Yeah, I saw you there as well. You was there. Um, I wanted Broly to come up. Broly was busy as usual. <laughs> um, Jan, you was there. Denny was with, um, with Broly. And Amal, you were there as well. So there was a lot of y'all who was there and you was like getting some sort of training. Now, I won't touch on this is that you won't, all of you won't always remember because you'll wipe your mind. I actually had to get training with this. I had to actually ask because I was like, why, are my, why am I not remembering everything? Sometimes you just wake up and you only remember how it feels. And you're like, oh, I was, I, I just remember I was running from something. I was fighting something. I just don't remember, right? That's, sometimes you just get that or you remember bits and pieces. That's all right. So the, I remember the one night I said, I guys, I want to remember everything. And they were like, cash. They were like, you can't because you wipe your own mind. You choose what you remember. And I was like, okay, I understand that. But you guys know me. I'm like, I have to experience to fully get the wisdom and understand. Me personally, I want to experience. So I'm like, can I just see? Can I just live it and see? And they were like, all right, all right. So I go there and I remembered everything. And then when I came back, I was like, I remember 85% of it and I was like I don't need to a lot of it I didn't remember those details because it distracts you from your physical mission so you have like almost separate lives you take a lot of stuff with you from different realms like you take stuff from the physical to the astral stuff from the astral to the physical but you also wipe your own mind that certain things it's like it's unnecessary to remember like you don't need to remember that you were fighting this demon and what that demon looked like. Or you don't need to remember specifically what the dragon you were talking to looked like. You just remember what it said, what it felt like, and, and your relationship with it, right? 
little things like that you do that on purpose and so you're gonna remember what you're supposed to remember but also not remember what you're what's not necessary it's like when you have a birthday party and you remember the highlights of your birthday party you just don't remember every single detail of when you walked up the stairs what, what you ate um what you were talking about when you're talking to that person that's like the mind wipe stuff see it like that in the astral like you don't need to remember every detail you just remember the highlights and the big moments that mean a lot to you that you're supposed to remember i'm all you felt today yeah i i saw you there you was but you were scared to do the final exam i remember that and you were with you were with two of your friends they were there too it's a girl and a guy i bet you these are your friends that you usually chill with these are your two people that you were friends with that came with you that you know now you definitely were there i'm glad you felt it you see how it's like you had a feeling but you just didn't remember like you doing it it's exactly another example i've been taking a lot of y'all to everywhere i go when i can and then you see when we do these then i'm like i kind of tell you i'm like oh yeah you did you did and I, like a lot of y'all remember or you just feel it mm -hmm. so um tonight i want to take y'all to mars i feel like I'm waiting for orders. They told me soon we're going to Mars. And I think we're going to Mars tonight. If not Mars, we're going somewhere off planet. It could even be the moon. But we're going somewhere off planet tonight. And all of you could come if you want to. All of you could come if you want to. You literally just tell your guides you want to come with me and we'll go. Because tonight we're going to travel. I wanted to visit the Zeta Reticulans last night. And I did, but I didn't get to see them. I was kind of cheesed. I woke up and I was like, okay, I got to see y'all's world, but I want to like see y'all. But they're like, not yet, not yet. I want to go. I've been seeing red dirt lately. Ooh, you ready? Okay, that's one of the big signs. If you see red dirt, you, you ready. I knew it. Like today I was trying to travel and I felt attracted to some planet, but I didn't know which one. Okay, look at that. All of y'all are like, yeah, something with Mars. Or like, I feel like I'm supposed to go there. Okay, so if it's not tonight, it's going to be in a few days we go. I just follow, I follow orders, bro. They're like, yo, we need to, we need astral travelers. We need the star seeds to go to Mars to learn this. Then I bring them. Oh yeah, astral travelers to go here. I go there. I'm just doing my part. I'm doing my role, but it's important y'all go to Mars because of the portals that are there and the learning about what happened in the wars there. You're like basically seeing what they went through. What a lot, a lot of y'all were on Mars. Maldek and Mars mean a lot to me. And so those were very earth-like planets. They went through a similar journey. Um, and Earth is the third attempt at, uh, for lack of a better word, an Earth-like planet. You ever visit the Agarthans inner Earth civilization? Another place I want to visit. I did once, uh, but I don't remember a lot. I just remember how cool it looked. You're like, whoa, it's like Earth in reverse. You see the whole outer rim and everything. And there's like some sort of light bulb in the middle. Um, it's like a little sun in the middle. And a lot of the beings are gold skinned. But that's all I remember because um, I went in there only to get just some information. That was a long, that was a long time ago. I think that was a year ago. Asking the guys for permission is like your parents signing up permission. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, there's going to be a time later in about 30 days when we're going to go into a black hole. But that's, af that's a after a while. Like we, if I brought you into a black hole now, that'd be like making y'all smoke weed for the first time. It's like, oh shit, like what, what the hell is going on? It's like that, it's a mind trip. If you watch Black Mirror, that's that's Black Hole. That's a Black Hole show. If you watched um, Zathura, at the end he literally says that there is a Black Hole. If you've ever been into Zathura before, the only people that I know that been to Zathura was me and Layton, which he's not here right now, but Layton and I used to travel a lot with, and one time I went to Zathura, and it's just like the movie, it's a game. But it's not a board game, it's really like a game. Almost like the Astral Arena, but you have to go through the whole entire game and it's like a competition between each other. And each game or each, when it's somebody else's turn, it's a new game that you have to play. It was really fun, but after you go into a black hole, you're like, all right, we're good for a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't need to go into a black hole for a bit, but it's a mind trip. Now the guy's just talking about reality shifting real quick. If you want a reality shift, that's that's just astral traveling too. Like you just astral traveling to another timeline. Yeah, those are fun. I mean, yes, you could go to fictional places. You can go to places that you make up on your own. You can go to little alternate timelines. Just ask yourself why. Because reality shifting, my guides would always tell me you have to go with um you have to go with somebody, especially at the beginning, because you could call you could go through what they call drifting. So it's when you go to another timeline and you forget you're in another timeline 
and you're living in that timeline like as though it's your timeline. But if you're in awareness and you also travel a lot, you just know. You just know you ain't in the right timeline. Even when you're hanging out with your family, you're like, this is not, this is my family, but this is not my family. Just like that. You'll have awareness. But I remember when we were traveling, my sister, I didn't drift, but my sister was. She was like, she like, at one point, she was just sitting on the bed reading a book. And I was like, I was like, Sammy, like, you got to, you're not in your reality. You got to wake up. And then she went like this. She's like, oh my God, thank you. Okay, where are we going? She's, and she was like, okay, I think we got to get out of here soon. Like, I don't like when I drift. That's exactly why they sent us here together. And it's wild because floating through the in-between, you'll never forget that. It was, the in-between is like those universes, bubble universes. And I didn't have so much control when I was flying. That's why we got sucked into, she got sucked into one. And then I had to like run in. Because they were like, oh, now it's your guys' turn to travel together on your own after you did with us. And I was like, what? And then we started flying around. And then we got, we got lost. But that was part of the learning process. And it looks just like this. There's just a whole bunch of bubbles. And they're different timelines in the universe. It looks so similar to this, man. Oh, my God. I can't find a better one. The feeling of it. If it's just like this. Like, you don't feel like you're in nowhere. It feels so, like, blank. And I see why a lot of beings want to live there. But, um, yeah. If you want to go to different timelines, you can. You could, you could just ask someone to come with you. They may not even remember. My sister didn't remember a thing. I was, I was looking at her. I'm like, she ain't going to remember a joint. But at least I had her there with me. But when we woke up, she's like, she told me after I told her, she's like, I did feel like I went somewhere far. Like, I just thought that was just me being extra. So she had the feeling, she just didn't have the remembrance of what happened. You'll get that a lot too, especially if you're traveling with people that you're not, that aren't focused on astral traveling. They have other focuses in their life. Yeah, then they won't remember. Amal said, I remember last summer when I was in Morocco, in the middle of the night, just before a prayer, I had like a picture come in my mind and it was in a whole different planet. It was with red ground and dark sky. And it was a battle against another group. I felt like I was there before. What does that sound like to y'all? I'm curious. What does that sound like to y'all before we say it? I think you know. Because a lot of y'all are feeling this place too. They told me we're getting ready to go there. And y'all keep feeling this draw. Like you're to go there. You keep seeing visions of Mars. Yeah, this is, this is all of our confirmation right now. That we're going to Mars either tonight or in a few days. Because this is... <laughs> you guys are definitely feeling the draw to go there and amal you did have a connection to mars too like you you did a, you were there a lot in the time of war on mars a lot of us were there together during the time of war or the the final wars that place means a lot to us a few of you have mall deck you remember mall deck um especially for bro this is crazy especially for you dexter mall deck is uh that's where me and you connect as well as mall deck there's a few of y'all that was on mall deck i went to the moon with my mom last night last year i was it was funny as hell she was complaining about stuff just like irl <laughs> that's why you gotta choose choose carefully who you want to take with you because my sister was so like open and she was so like yeah let's just go and let, let's just see what's out there but if I went with like, if I went with like my dad, he'd be really confused. Or my, my cousins, they'd be like, where the hell are we? What are we doing? Like, I'm hungry. <laughs> so yeah, it all depends on who you want to take with you. How would you shift to a totally different reality? You would go to the in-between. You go to the in-between and you could go to different timelines, which have access to different realities, if you want to say. Because all of those timelines are just different realities, essentially. So you could go and you could... You could do that. And happy birthday, Jeannie. I hope your day's going well, bro. And tell us what your, if you got your birthday gift from the GFL yet. I want to know what's good. Homie said, I did that last night. It felt so weird. Oh, when you're reality shifting. That's what I, that's why I described it in my videos. I said, I said, it feels weird. But I was like, I'm trying to explain it to y'all. So I don't use the word weird. But that's the only way to explain it is it feels weird. When you get off earth, you know the energy of earth because you feel the energy of earth no matter what when you're here when you actually project off of earth you don't feel the earth energy anymore you're like whoa why does it feel different you go to another planet and it feels different you go to another realm aka another galaxy and it feels different I'm telling you imagine now going to a whole different timeline you feel very far away that's the only way to explain it. you feel very far away which is not scary though because you could easily go back to your body there's no problem with that but 
just the fact that you feel so far away you're like Ooh. and then when you go back home you're like blessed like we're, we're back here when i personally reality shift it's easy for me sometimes uh to afterwards astral travel okay so it's like you get in it it's almost like when you you run and then after you need to run again it's just easier to run like in the same five minutes like you run you take a break and then you run again it's easier yeah just like that gifts with a s for real whoa okay i can see they're they're giving you lots the spirits are giving you lots especially after that that whooping you did that whooping you gave that one being i think that was last night yeah you you want to roll with your your warrior joint bro and that i actually watched your battle i went to your battle at the one arena and i saw you battling yo you doing it raw man i like it I like it. Naive said, I still remember my first astral travel. I vividly remember was in a grain field with a very pinkish sunset and seeing two motherships in the distance with two beings waving to me as in like welcoming me. I woke up that morning full with joy, telling my siblings all about it. There you go. You went back home. You went back home and that home is in Orion. You went back to go check things out. Yeah, feel the place again. Yeah. Jeannie said, yeah, last night was lit. I had an abnormal amount of awareness too last night until the end when I ended up at a party that I didn't realize was for me. Yes, why? Yes, why? And I was at your party for a little bit. I was just, I was busting a little bit and I was like, all right, I gotta go. But it was so fun. And to see how happy you were, man. I just... Congratulations, bro. Congratulations. Happy solar return, brother. Yes, sir. So do you guys have any questions or you want to talk about anything in specific? Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything purely I wanted to mention. I think I touched on all the information I wanted to, but whatever you guys want to talk about now or any questions, I'm down. Oh, yeah, the practice. <laughs> and then I'm going to talk about the schools in a minute. So if you want, if you guys, some of you want to practice right now, how about this? Okay, I'm going to give you 20 seconds. I'm going to let some of y'all, all of y'all, if you want to, I'll let you, I'll give you access to remote view my room real fast. Okay. And I want you to see if you could see anything in my room. Remember, don't feel like you got to get it right. If you feel like you got to get it right, you're going to cloud yourself. Just be like, whatever happens, happens. Just open your mind to seeing my room, inside my room. I can already feel some of y'all in here. It's crazy. What do you see? Is there a small dinosaur statue? There is. There's a, a dragon right up there. And it's like a, kind of like a statue. Yeah. And there's also a dragon statue right there. Big as lion. Oh yeah. The big ass lion on my bed. You guys already know what that is. You got, you guys already know what that is. Yup. You already know. You already know. I see like a brown nightstand with some kind of herb on it. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I do have some herbs over here and I got a bunch of herbs that are over in this thing right here. Mushrooms. Yeah, so, yo, some of y'all get in my cupboard, eh? Y'all got, y'all saw my cupboard. Got mushrooms in there. Dragon book, green book. <laughs> They're doing pretty well. Yeah, y'all see the bookshelf right here. Yep. Any details you could get? I'm only giving y'all access for a little bit because last time, <laughs> you guys remember the last time when all these people were in my room? That was crazy. I see a musical instrument of some kind, maybe more than one, either some kind of drum or a wind instrument. For some reason, did Gerido? is coming to mind interesting i don't i actually don't know what that is but uh my sister is playing guitar you're seeing that we practice it with that a little bit gray carpet that's right there it's really like a bright gray see if i could show y'all y'all can see that right there yep how you been feeling like touches on you lately i have been feeling some of the spirits giving me like a caress i already see them around and stuff and like i communicate with them all the time but um they like i start to feel them at some points touch me and i get excited when they do i love fruit i love fruit dini stop <laughs> i know what you're thinking stop playing with me bro <laughs> okay anything else y'all want to say yeah you know i got a lot of plants up in here yep okay y'all are actually doing pretty good you're doing pretty good you see how you notice when you could when you look in up space sometimes you could only see colors or you could only see um like certain images like maybe you see a mouse but you don't know what color it is you just see a mouse or maybe you see a plant and you see like it looks like a palm tree but that's all you could get or you only see purple and you're like what the hell is with purple and then i'm like oh well my 
like my walls are purple or this is purple, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is, bro, you'll notice you'll get some things. And as you as you work out your third eye more, as you work out that muscle, you're going to see a lot more things. And it's going to be like a lot clearer. Sometimes I don't see anything but colors. That's OK. That's all right. And sometimes you only see certain things. At least you're getting information, right? And the more you work out that muscle, the clearer things get. All of a sudden, you can see all the details. You just see so many damn details and you're seeing precise things. That's just you working out your pineal gland. And it seems like something can came through and I got scared and turned on the light and slept on me. Oh, you felt like something came through the door when you were sleeping? Yeah, we get that pretty often too. That's, you know, spirits, you're just hearing spirits coming in and out. And you know they're, you know they're not negative because you don't feel like a heaviness or like you got to watch out you're only kind of just afraid because you're like yo i know something entered and i just don't know what it is you'll get that a lot especially when i have clients beings coming in and out the door or in and out my portal yeah and then sometimes you see them at the corner of your eye or you hear them sometimes i hear Shh, by my ear as i see it too yeah you get some evidence of them coming through you know what's good you see something blue you said I see medicine like oil. You're seeing, I, you maybe be seeing my inhalers. I have inhalers. They're literally like right there. <laughs> They're blue. Maybe you're seeing that. And the oil is in my drawer. Garden gnome. I have, a, I have lion statues right outside my door. Two lion statues that stand outside my door. So you're seeing those. I can see why you think they're garden gnomes because they're meant to put in your garden. There you go. You see how you got that? You just didn't know that they were lions. That's good. And some people be like, why do I see like lions? Or like lion statue maybe and then they just don't know where it is they just see the statue there you go so you're getting little bits perfect um oh there was something someone said i gotta go back up and find it you're drinking a drink or have one near you blue lotus tea you already know what's up one time i had my guides come give me a message in bed no lie i do that kind of often yeah i mean they're especially with you genie yeah they always speaking to you especially at night right before you go to sleep they're like talking to you clearer, like, okay, we're going to do this. You ready to do that? You ready? And you're like, yeah, let's go. And then you hop out and you go. That's what I love about your guys too. They're always like having a conversation with you before you're going to bed <laughs> or like right as you're transitioning to the astral realm. They're like, da -da, da -da, and they're talking. I do have a fairy door. I have a fairy door here, which is where my homie, you, if you guys know, um, Favy, Favy who comes in here, who is, a uh, who's very tied to the fairies. The fairies love her, which is why. They call her the fairy queen. I let her fairies come into my room and they're amazing. I love them too. Okay. That should be evidence for you guys that you could do this. So you could do this in waking state and you could do this when you go to sleep. So how about this? You start astral traveling, AKA remote viewing in the day and just get like, for example, you're like, I'm going to the store. Let me see what it looks like before I go to the store and you go there and then you're seeing, it's just like, I made that quick video, which I deleted now. In which I, before I went up in the mountains in Jamaica, I was like, I'm in a remote view there first. And I was like, I see a flower bush. I see a giant gate and I see this and that. And then I literally went up and then I filmed and showed y'all a scene. I was like, oh, there's a flower bush. There's the gate. That's crazy. Oh, that's what was purple. Okay. It was, it was the, it was the cloth. So you get confirmations by doing this. So you could practice and don't be mad when you get only small details. Or you don't get something right you're it's like getting mad that you can only lift a 15 pound weight when you're trying to lift 50 pounds like you have to start small right so give yourself credit when you're going you're getting things that you couldn't have got otherwise you got some mushrooms or a mushroom crystal i got a whole bunch of mushrooms up in that drawer but i only do it when they when they tell me to maybe once or twice a month when i need answers to something when i when i'm trying to understand something deep i uh i i'll take a mushroom red knife <clears throat> excuse me oh yeah i got the sword right there yep <laughs> i got the sword and i got a i got a machete what they call jamaica they call it a machete i got a machete my dad women machete boy can't find me machete that's my dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did have a crystal knife near my bed my nephew broke it you guys it was that crystal machete that crystal machete and he broke it and i was like okay well i've been feeling anyways that crystal wasn't needed anymore i was like well i spent a lot of money on this but i don't feel like i need it and then he came in my room and broke it. I was like, all right, that's, that's, that was just ultimate more confirmation. I was like, all right. Um, someone's going to say, I forget. What weapon do you like to use the most to fight in the astral? 
I love using a sword or I use the sword from Halo. You guys know that that blue one? I'll actually show y'all. It looks like this. I love this one. I used to use this in uh, my past lives in the Orion Wars during the Halo Wars. I used the sword that looked very similar to that. And it was, like you said, it was like an energy sword. Yeah. But before I, I got those past life memories and I was getting, uh, I was actually traveling there and stuff. I kept being shown this, that energy sword. I was like, what's up with this energy sword? And I go in the astral and use it. And I'm like, this is nice. Like, I feel like I've used this before. Like this was a signature weapon. And then I got memories and I went there. I was like, oh, okay. That, it, it just makes sense. So by now, when you guys have this happen to you all the time, which all of you are having this happen to you, by the time you feel something, you're like, I feel like I use this a lot or this means a lot. You don't even have to question no more. You're like, okay, this, I definitely use this. I just need to see now. And then you go and you see. <laughs> They show me like clouds moving, maybe a portal that looks like that. Ooh. Oh, you mean like in my room? I got one of those too, yeah. I got a lot of portals in my room. A lot of portals. I have, uh, I can't even count. I have this one, this, the big mirror. That's the big portal. I got, I got, that's a portal right there. That's a portal right there. I got that galaxy one that you guys seen before. I have the Metroid one. I have Earth one. I have three earth ones and this one here is a mall deck portal and that gives me easy access to mall deck real quick i just need a mars one the mars one i i usually use um this can y'all see it it's like this desk mat and it has like the planets on it yeah i use this and i'll use that as a portal as well go to different planets i went to uranus uranus was actually fun <laughs> there's not much there to do just the energy is like it's like a vacation you're just resting in orbit and you're just looking at Uranus and you're just feeling the energy. It's like a, like, it's like a breathe, like a breath for a little bit. And then you go back. Yeah, that was nice. What do you think your passion was on other planets? My passion, they were always to, to essentially stop a war or to help the people like Maldek, one of my favorite planets. Um, very beautiful. I was, my passion there was to help people to transmute their, their trauma which was really hard at that time, if you guys know about Maldek, to help people transmute their trauma. Maldek or Mars, it was to stop them from creating that great weapon that they were going to create to destroy it. And um, Earth, it's to help raise the consciousness of everyone and to protect them while their consciousness is raising and to battle the NAA, the negative alien agenda here, which we're all part of right now. And the Great War, the final battle, which we've been waiting for for thousands of years is coming that's why we're here this moment's really big i actually just watched the video and it's a guy saying bluntly that extraterrestrials are among us let me put my youtube um i, I binged a whole bunch of videos yesterday it's either these videos were made a month ago or four months ago all of them were literally either made a month ago or four months ago and they're saying that um that aliens are among us and that many of them don't even know they're aliens but they are and that they have a mission and they're they're going to save the planet. They literally said that they're going to save the planet because we can't. He's, he's basically saying that we're relying on the star seeds, which is super fascinating. Um, I'll, I'll send you a link to a video right now. I just got to find it. Okay. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if this is one, but this is one where he talks about aliens among us because Harvard just came out, what, about a month ago and said the aliens are among us. That one's a quick one. I'm, I'm going to send you all the videos I was binging that meant something. It is that one. Oh, Lord, no, this girl was, this girl was kind of pissing me off. The way she was doing it, it's like she was doubting. It was kind of annoying me, but here you go. Because I've seen this lady talk before years ago when she was talking to um, the one, the def ex-defense minister of Canada, Paul Hellier, when he was talking about the Galactic Federation's real and he wasn't supposed to say that, but he was telling everybody the GFL's real. And the lady was talking and she's like, aliens, oh, you say they're among us? And he's like, yes. I've been working to defend, I'm the ex-defense minister, Ken, I'm telling you that the GFL is real. And, he, and she just like, she's basically, her energy is just like, okay, man. But she, she had to be open to it, right? Oh, this is the one, I think this is the one where he says ETs are among us and that they're here to save us. I'm about to send y'all a whole leap of joy, damn. Um, yeah, so I think this is one more. Let me just double check and see if this is the one. Okay, yeah, so this guy, when he says there's zero doubt. Okay, here's the last one I'll send y'all. Here you go. This is the one where he's like, yo, these, like, there's no doubt. And I'm not sure if you guys, I don't know what this, what's in this video, but this may mean something to y'all too. Y'all could keep this one. There is, <laughs> I'm just giving y'all a holy joint right now. 
there is a star this is the the study published from harvard which was published on msn this funny msn a week ago you can only read it on your computer there's a video that you could watch on your phone but it's just saying are we surrounded by extraterrestrials but then if you want to read it i'll just share my screen so y'all can take a look we can read a little bit together okay we'll read a little bit together right now he says here harvard university is one of the most Revered institutions in the world. So when it's academics publish new studies, I don't know. They can know that. All right. Oh no, hold on. Everything's glitching. Okay, there we go. This video is pretty good. It's just talk about. Um, they're just they're ju basically this is more for people that are having a hard time believing aliens are real. This is just warming them up. But um, it has come. It may come to a surprise, therefore, that a team of scientists at Harvard Montana Technological University have just produced a paper suggesting an advanced alien civilization may be walking among us here on Earth. Now they're talking, they're basically saying that um, have these beings have concealed themselves stealthily on Earth, underground, um, and or it's near in the way it's like like the moon or passing as human they call them crypto terrestrials basically star seeds whilst its author acknowledged that the idea of hidden in plain sight crypto terrestrials is likely to be regarded skeptically as by most scientists they argue that the theory deserves genuine consideration in the spirit of epistemic humility and openness so they're basically saying more if you click down here that they're among us and that they're star seeds, um, non-human intelligence, and it goes more. You read it and you're like, "Wow, they're really talking about us like that." It says down here that being since there's so much UFO workers that work in the government and the Pentagon, right here it says that uh, some religious people went into the Pentagon and told the Pentagon not to study them further because they're demons. You know what that is? They're trying to they're trying to halt it. They're trying to halt. Every, the, the outing of everything and they're trying to stop the awakening of star seeds right that's how the that's the sad thing is they've used religion to to bound people to get people that are conscious that people that are aware of the spirit realm is real they're trying to say now that they're using religion to get those people that are aware of more and bind them and say oh don't astral travel that's demonic don't take crystals they're demonic oh you have to pray and tell God to forgive you. Um, give everything to God. Meanwhile, they're not telling you that you are God. So I'm saying this because we've all, almost all of us have been through that religious battle. But it's happening again. You can see they're, they're using religion on purpose. That was the plan. And once you awaken, you realize, whoa, they were, they're really using religion. That's why they don't want to tell people yet. Because it's going to cause a whole thing and then they're going to lose all their power. They don't want to lose all their power. All those videos I sent y'all, I hope you read it because, or you watch them and read this thing because it's potent. And some of the stuff, I'm forgetting what I wanted to say from some of the videos, but they're very powerful. And you're like, wow, it's about that time. Yeah, that one girl I sent you, she's on, she's on, the, she's on this morning show talking about she is, she's a star seed and she's a walk-in. Really cool. Really, really cool. So are there like no famous people that talk about this type of stuff? All of them know about this stuff. All of them know about this stuff, but they can't talk about it because that's part of the law. It's like you could do these things, but you can't, you can't, um, you can't tell people. That's why X was teching out because they said you can be famous and do, we'll give you all this rich and fame. But you can't tell people about the truth. And then he started telling people the truth and then he got popped out. He started telling people about Third Eye and all that. Um, Paul Hellyer, is he still alive? They was really hoping everybody would just think he's crazy. He died in 2021. He came out bluntly on the news. If you guys just look up Paul Hellyer, ex-defense minister of Canada. And he said, the Galactic Federation's real. They've been here for thousands of years. And they walk among us right now and they're helping us on this planet. And then he's like... Oh, so they're they're here. You're saying they're around? And he's like, Yes, lady, like they're here. And then he's he he died. But you see what you, Jim Carrey's a good example. He's just trying to tell you in a joking way. But they all they all know. But you don't have to worry, y'all, because that's why we're here, starts it together. This is why we built this community. Is so we have space for you guys to gain your information, evolve together. I like we're all here together doing this so then we could do our mission we're at the final stages of this hard battle we talked about um heavier times coming in October November it's like you're preparing for all the clients I had today they're like 
You know, I feel like I'm preparing for war. And I'm like, wow, they're an awareness of war coming. We're in like a final stage. We've been waiting for this for a long ass time. So by next year, things are going to be a lot cleaner and people are going to be a lot more aware. And that's where people like you are going to be needed. People are going to be talking to y'all because they want to understand. That's some people are like, whoa, so you was, you was really telling the truth this whole time. So then they're asking, wait, so you actually in contact with aliens or ETs? And you're going to be like, I've been like, they're my family. So the, the world's mind is being blown slowly. And that's why we have this a safe area for you guys to evolve, knowing you're good, get the information you need so you could do your mission. OK, again, every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to be making classes here. So you guys have every Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be here together. And the other people that are in here, the team that's also hosting classes, they're in here when they host their classes as well. And they got theirs they host. And so shout out to them as well for the hard work they doing. I had a vision when people are going to be confused and we helping them. Next year in 2026, big time. And 2027 is going to be like first landing. When they land and then we're dabbing them up and like, all right, what's good? And then everybody's like, oh, like, yo, this is crazy. But we're just like here, like we're walking with them and we're like, here's meet Bessie, right? <laughs> Like, meet my dog, right? It's going to be cool. 2026 is where a lot of y'all are going to get your first contact. You're going to get your first physical contact with them. Right now, you've been in contact with them astrally and more astrally um, as the time goes by. But 2026 is when you guys are going to be, like, beamed up or told to go somewhere. Like, you're told to go in the forest and then you meet them there. Yeah, because then you need to be ready, already warmed up to them physically, so then you can introduce them to the world later. Excuse me, confirmation. Woo. Any thoughts on 2025 and a potential economic crash? It's already happening. It's already happening. The recession, they call it, that's, that's happening right now. Um, you want me to send y'all something? Hold on, I, let me find it quick. If you guys want to understand a little more... Okay, never mind. I'm not supposed to send that to y'all. Never mind. But um, just understand that there's... A lot of economics fall happening right now. And all you got to do is be aware. <laughs> Y'all can see my history. <laughs> Y'all looking at it right now. You see I was binging a bunch of stuff. Uh, but as you can see, the video I wanted to send is not even here. Just understand what's happening at this moment. But they don't want you guys to focus on that because they, the power is shifting. They're losing their power and the GFL is gaining more power. We're taking back the planet right now. Literally taking back the planet. And we're all working together in this. And the, these people, these, the darker, the NAA, the negative alien agenda, they're losing. But there has to be a final battle, which is the dark days they talk about. You'll hear people say the three days of darkness or the dark days that's coming. It's in the November area. So I'm only saying this just so you know that what you've been feeling like, okay, there's something coming. Like we're doing something heavy soon to where after everything's good, it's that time. But you're in training right now. You have everything you need. You have all the training. You have all the tools. You have everything you need. We're not going to talk too much about the dark days. We're not supposed to. But just know you good. And you are doing everything you are supposed to. It's around the election time too. Isn't that crazy? It's going to... Actually, I, I got to stop. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. I've had so many dreams of invasions. And so many of us are going to have to fight. And I'm excited to fight. Yup. The invasion is astrally. It's just as real as this, but it's, it's not physical. Like they're not coming down from the sky. They're just, the dark beings are deciding, you know what, like F this. And they come out and they're doing a final battle. And that's when it's, it's done. They're, there's going to be a time when they snap, which is going to be November area. And they're like, you know what, we have to do this or else we're going to lose. And they end up losing anyways. They don't, they don't like going down without a bang. You know, their egos hurt. They have to fight. So you guys are going to be fighting in the astral a lot during that time, which is why we're here together training. And you are going to notice there's just a lot of heavy energies in the physical. You're in the physical body and there's just a lot of heavy energies with everybody. And maybe power, a lot of power outages, a lot of internet going out. That's what I'll say about that. It's just the, the heavy, heavier times. It's about to come. But that's part of the spiritual war. And that's why, like, in the videos I sent you, you'll hear the guy literally saying that the star seeds are going to save us. To us, see how, for us, it doesn't feel that scary? It's almost like, a, all right, we're ready. Well, let's do it. But in some of these videos I was watching, all these videos I was watching were these inside government officials, these insider feds that I'm not supposed to send y'all, but these insider feds, um, they're talking in these interviews, and they get so nervous. They're so nervous. Like the one guy, when the lady asked, she's like, these cyber attacks, what, she's like, what, what kind of update would just cause everything around the world to just stop? Isn't there things 
in, put in place to stop that. And he got so nervous to the point where he was choking and the girl was like, drink some water. And he was like, you know, I just, <clears throat> I just feel, <clears throat> excuse me. And he was busting a sweat and he had to drink some water. And all the other ones where it's inside her feds, they're so nervous. The one girl, she's talking and she's like this. She's literally like this and she's moving her rings inside out. She's like, oh yeah, and um... There was just like some things going on over there. Yes, yeah, they're so scared. And then the ones that talk about ETs are like the 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 stars are here to save us. That's y'all. But do you see how it kind of feels like a Tuesday almost? It feels it doesn't feel that as big as they're making it seem. That's why we're here. Cause the us we're like, oh yeah, all right, let's do let's do what we gotta do. But to them, they're like, y'all y'all gotta save us. <laughs> That's the fun part. That's the funny part is they look to people like you. So it may feel nerve okay we'll say it like this it may feel kind of nerve-wracking because you're like whoa i didn't know i was this important let's get to work right and you're more excited that's it you're not going to be petrified at all but the humans like the neighbors they petrified they bite in their nails because they, they they can't handle these things which is why we're here love and forgiveness are the secret weapon marching and stepping in the light of the source cutting out corruption with the fiery sword. I like that. That's poetic, man. Damn. If you want to make a party in the astral, just, just say so. Just decide what... Uh, I usually do astral parties at my house or like at a, on another planet. My house meaning my astral house. Um, oh, you want to do it for your 18th birthday? Okay. You could do it at your house. You could ask your... Um, you could ask some of your ET allies or your family to have a party there. And you invite people. And you just say whoever wants to come can come. Yeah, you could do that. Totally up to you. Okay, the beach sounds good. And ET Beach will probably be better. Yeah, have a bonfire at ET Beach. Yeah, I like that better. Earth, you, you know, just gonna be a bunch of spirits running around. You're like, yo, I'm trying to party. Like, go away. That's like partying in a war zone. Literally, Earth is a war zone. Especially when you go off planet, you guys start interacting more with your ET family. Um, some of you physically, like physically going off planet. For now, a lot of you, most of you, it's actually off planet. You're like, wow, this really is a war zone. And you guys know it, but like... When you see it in perspective wise, you're like, wow, the whole galaxy is literally watching because this is World War Three. They kept talking about World War Three coming. We're in it right now. And we're in the battle of World War Three is coming hot. And then it's going to come out later. Oh, yeah. World War Three was a spiritual war. And everybody's like, oh, OK. And who saved us? The Star Seas. Oh, OK. Who are they? Y'all's names coming out. I don't think I remote viewed your room. I saw like a big white space with a triangular like door with like gold strips and it was white i also felt touched have an idea what that is um it definitely it wasn't my room but you did have access to an astral room a different a different room triangular like door that's gfl joint gold strips sounds about right sounds about pleiadian yeah you were you were astral traveling to another place that's good very angelic place oh if some of you want to battle each other in the astral you could do that you can um go to the astral arena <sighs> You know what? Tuesday, Tuesday next week is when we're doing the GFL class. Thursday again next week, we'll talk about Astral again. But what I will do is I will, we could talk about the Astral read a little bit in the GFL agents class. That's when we're going to be talking about assignments and we'll do some divinations and stuff like that, of course, just to see how everything's going with the all mission. And then on Thursday, we'll talk like focus on Astral projection. But Tuesday, we can touch a little bit and talk about our travels together and we could talk about uh the astral arena more so if you guys want to go to the astral arena you can in, a, in about three days some of you are about to go <laughs> especially amrita amrita you've been going to these astral arenas and astral schools yeah you've been there um who else let me look abundance for all yeah you've been and isa jekka yeah you you've been there You've been at the Astral Arena. I'm curious how much you remember, but yeah, you've been going there. It's like, you guys should watch my video on YouTube about that. It's like a, it's like you could decide what game you want to play. It's literally an open arena. You could play a game with different people, Astral Projectors or friends. And you take those, you take that with you to the physical. You could decide what game you want to play. I remember the Lyran game. I went with Genie, me, Genie, and Broly. We played the Lyran game. That was fun. And it was wild how the GFL told me about it first. I'll, quick story. Um, I kept getting these pictures of these. I won't be able to find it. But there's these warriors. And they are like, they have like swords and stuff. And it says, get the squad together. I was like, I know what that is. And they had chickens with them. But I'm like, that's really weird. They had chickens with them. It's a little video game, right? And then my guys were like, that's important. That's important. Keep an eye on that. And then after 
when I went into the Astral, I went to the Astral Arena. There was a game and it looked, oh, you guys see it in the video on YouTube. It was called Lyra and it looked like a chicken coop and it looked like just like the chickens I saw in that one game in the physical I was looking at. It was like an ad. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what is with chickens and Lyra? And then I talked to Jeannie and he's like, oh, well, do you remember? And it's like, it's, it's metaphorical for like having to escape. Like it was like having to escape the chicken coop. And Lyra was like having to escape the planets and, and fight the people that was trying to eat us. And I was like, oh, that made sense. So I kept seeing those ads with the people fighting and they had chickens with them. Like, what the hell? And then in the arena, they had the chicken coop and the chicken like running. It all added up. So sometimes you'll be told what game you're going to play beforehand. Um, or you'll have an idea. It, you guys remember, it looked like Friv.com, literally. If you guys go to Friv, you guys actually want to go to Friv real quick? I'll show you. If you go to Friv.com, all these games that are here are real games. But they're more galactic. So, like, you're going to see the maze game, but it's not literally a maze. It's going to feel more like Maze Runner. Like, you're literally lost on a planet that is like a giant maze. Tanks of the Galaxy, I don't got to say much about that. BFF's high school first date, <laughs> right? You tend to play that game. <laughs> That's like you going to like Arcturian school or going to school somewhere in the galaxy. Just apply all these things to galactic terms. Is there a chicken avian? Yeah, there is. Water boy and lavender girl. <laughs> is that a game? <laughs> That's funny. But I'm um, at one point, I'm actually curious if the chicken game is here, but it's endless. You see how it could go on forever? It, go, it looks like this is the Astral Arena. You're like, what game do I want to play? And you can just choose a random one. You're like, oh, I'm going to play Snakes and Ladders. And then you literally run in from snakes and they're like reptilians. And then you have to like, it could be anything, bro. It could be anything. Eco ego. You're battling people with ego and you have to battle your own ego coming out. So these games help you. They help you gain memories and they also help you within your spirit and personally. So that's, that's just a little bit about the Astral Arena for y'all. If y'all are curious about that. It kind of makes sense what you said because no long... Because not long ago, light came out of me twice. My sister and little brother saw it the first time, and it went toward the whole room. And then another one, while I was going out of college, and my sister saw it. Why can't I see it? And why and how does this happen? Ooh, you got light beings coming in and out quick. In and out real quick. This portal is like they're coming in, coming out. They pop in, you see the flash, and that's them coming in. It's like... And they come in or them coming out. Oh, you'll be able to see them in a little bit. Don't even worry about that. Can you talk about the Syrians a little? Um, for our meeting on Tuesday, you mentioned you were picking up strong mermaid sign energy. Yeah, I've been talking to the merfolk for a while. You guys want to see something cool? Let's check this out. So I got this bracelet from the Syrians, but I had this for years. Wondered what it was. And I always just thought it was a dragon bracelet. But then after I realized it's a sea monster bracelet, so a water dragon bracelet. At first I told him, I was like, because I was talking with the Syrians and the mermaids for a while, for like a week uh, after we talked about last time. And I was like, can y'all give me something so I can have something with y'all? And they're like, you already do. And I looked and I was like, oh, and they were like the bracelet. And I looked and I was like, oh my God. And I said, what does it say? And if you can see right there, right? That's, that's Syrian language. That's merfolk language. And it says... From the ocean we come, from the ocean we shall rise. Whoa. Like, you can't make this shit up, bro. I told them, like, what do y'all mean by that? And they said they're gonna, they're about to come out the water too. Like, once the ETs are announced, they're gonna come out too. But it didn't make sense at first because they're like, oh, we're gonna make ourselves known. But I was like, oh, well, I didn't get any inf information about you guys, any beings coming out yet. And then I got the whole briefing about uh, disclosure. And then I, they made me watch all those videos that were just randomly sent to me. My mom just sent me random clips and like emailed me a bunch of random stuff. And it was all about ETs being disclosed, which is the, almost all the videos I sent you right now and lots more. So then I was like, oh, so the Syrians actually told me and the merfolk told me that they were going to come out. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're like, disclosure, it's coming soon. And then I got a briefing by the GFL about them coming out soon. So then I was like, oh, so... So then I looked at them and I was like, oh, so you guys are going to be showing yourselves as well. And they were like, yes, yes, yes. So I'm excited for that. And the whole, the whole phrase from the ocean we come and from the ocean we shall rise. It's like they're, they're trying to say we, come, we all come from the ocean, but they're saying we are the water beings. We have the power of the ocean. And from the ocean, our power, we will rise up out of the ocean 
and show people our power. I was like, wow. It's kind of, it's not scary. It's ominous. You're like, whoa. Did you talk about the part on how to astral project yet? Did I miss that? Oh, you did. But I will say briefly, focus on lucid dreaming because you're traveling every night anyways. And your dreams are just you astral traveling too. Dreaming is you ask, you traveling outside of your body in your own mental verse, right? And then you're astral traveling or astral projecting, you're traveling out in the open game universe. So dream or not, you're traveling. And if you keep focused on writing down your dreams, showing yourself, you want to remember your travels, you're showing yourself, I am, I need to remember and I'm putting to use these astral travels. You focus on that, you're going to remember more, you're going to travel more, you're going to even become aware that you're traveling. You're going to be like, oh my God, you're lucid dreaming, but you just become aware that you're traveling. You're like, oh my God. Okay. But this I'm in a dream. Okay. Do I want to set up the dream? Do I want to travel outside the dream? What do I want to do? Or you realize you're just actually traveling. Oh my God. I'm not, I'm in the universe. Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Or I'm just in awareness. Now I can travel the astral just with that greater awareness what does a black hole taste like it tastes like um he's asking that because we talked about abilities before and how some of us are developing the taste ability where we could taste people and things and it's weird like you could say you, you know what someone tastes like that sounds weird but it's true um black holes taste like everything they kind of taste metallic it almost tastes like a metal but a metal like you could taste everything like you taste everything in it and you're like whoa i'll say it like that black holes are eyes of the universe so you could use black holes to go anywhere. Uh, beings use black holes to travel to different places. But if you actually travel there, if you try and actually travel a black hole now, they're going to stop you because you have to have a certain level of spiritual maturity. Like every time I tried to go in a black hole, they wouldn't let me go into black holes until like the beginning of this year when they were like, okay, now we need to get you training in black holes. And I would travel there with Jeannie and Layton and Broly sometimes. Um, but... Then I realized why they held me back. I was like, wow, this thing is like Black Mirror. Dead ass, like Black Mirror. So that you got to wait a little bit and then you'll be ready. I'm going to take y'all into Black Holes in December and some of y'all in October. It's really intense. So just focus. Once you get kind of bored in the astral, you're like, okay, I've, I went to these planets. I've talked to these beings. I'm going to go into a Black Hole. Then you know you're ready because the astral is just like a Tuesday for you. A bunch of y'all are Snapchatting me right now. I feel like eventually I'll be able to smell people. I feel like everyone has a scent. Yes, I like that. Everybody does have a scent. They call that um, clairsalience, I think it's called. When you're able to smell. Yes. Rainwater, you're already getting ready for black holes within the next few days. So you're, well, you've been out traveling for a bit. So I can see why you're getting ready for black holes. But when you go into black holes, you're going to, they keep calling you the pyramid. Have they been calling you that recently? Or like the triangle, the pyramid, queen or princess or something? They keep calling you that. Because when you go into the black hole, it's going to be these triangular beings that take you in there to go to some different world. And it's a really bright world. Like a very like golden. Um, I've been there before, but it's really bright. I've only been there once. And they're going to take you there. They keep calling you the, the triangular queen, triangle, tri pyramid queen she said oh interesting but i do like triangles and have been seeing them lately okay yeah they're so they're trying to tell you that they're around Th that's it yeah triangles mean a lot to you and pyramids mean a lot to you let's read love and light guide guide the way freedom lead you wow i like this a lot that's so beautiful rainwater just know they they, they keep calling you that the triangle or or pyramid pyramid queen and they're gonna bring you to the civilization of pyramids like a civilization of pure light and they have a giant pyramid in the middle oh it's gonna be super super cool gabriella said cash you told me about helping this little boy i'm sure i'm sure oh what oh, sorry this is moving really quick um, i'm sure it's happening now could you give me a bit of advice is it the kid that um is it the one at the park because there's a kid at the park that you were supposed to be helping or like at a park and there's a kid in like a building. It's almost like an office building or something. Um, you're supposed to be helping. Yeah, but if you notice you're helping a little boy now, probably him. Because that was the one they were speaking about was that uh, the one from the park and the one in the building. They still keep talking about that one right now. Like the office building. No, I don't think so. Okay. That's all right. So just, just know that they... Just know that they come. And if you're already getting kids that you're helping, then, then you know it's... 
you're in that mode right now. And then you're going to know these specific kids they're talking about when they pull up. They're going to be very powerful kids that need you. Oh yeah, I never told, never spoke about this, but I put my two middle fingers together. You could see Saturn. I never really know what that meant, but Saturn was my favorite planet when I was younger. And I've heard some bad things about Saturn. No, go ahead and go. Go ahead and go. That's a poor, really just, it's like you went like this and you just like opened up and you could like see it. Cause you have a, you have a connection to to Saturn big time. Um, for you, Chris, you haven't been having too much assignment work at the moment. You've been just it's been a lot of uh, what's happening with school. I know you're probably on break right now, but uh, what's up with like school or like teaching? Tell me about that. You said like the day before my birthday. Oh, you you gotta tell me a little bit more about that. Cause um, that's the only thing to talk about. They're like he's not on mission mode. He's in accumulation mode. I want to run for student council president. Okay, that makes sense. Look, you in training for that. You in training for that. So they kept talking about the school and and focus in school. That's why. There you go. So you're getting you're literally in training to to do that. So you're in like a more leadership mode at this point in time. And they keep saying rest rest and accumulate because you're becoming a powerful person like you're you're becoming a leader this is your practice in leadership training meaning that you're not like having to train get ready for school but you just training in terms of being a leader at this moment if you can notice this summer it's all about becoming a leader more feeling more strong and independent in yourself yeah that, that's all that is mentally yeah yeah mentally yeah man yeah man that's all it is so the by the time you do go to school you're going to be ready to be in a leadership role, which is just assisting you in becoming a leadership as a star seed, right? So it's perfect. See how everything's lining up and on track? You want to roll, bro. Yeah, and you're supposed to be sleep. You every time I do divination with you, they always talk about you sleeping. You're supposed to be resting a lot too, especially with the um, the reflecting. You're doing a lot of reflecting and uh, internal reflecting and astral traveling. Yeah, man, right on track, right on track. People like me at school. I'm a friendly guy as as you are yep and as they should <laughs> this was a good class let's end things off here uh, i'm actually going on a mission real quick now um i may go live later maybe in the next three four hours we'll see how i feel but um you guys may see me a little bit later okay and if you guys have anything that you want to discuss with the family remember we're here right so tomorrow if you guys um loved if you guys just loved mission we went on together last night or in the next few nights start texting in here and letting everybody know like i went on this trip did any of y'all come or i saw you do you remember that's what this is here for right to engage safely so you guys can actually travel together you don't you don't necessarily need me but i'm here to do it with y'all right i'm here to bring y'all into the astral so some of you want to do it together you're like oh, okay cash is going to saturn tonight um but I'm not guided to go to Saturn. I'm guided to go to Venus. You guys want to go to Venus? And a few others are like, yeah, I've been guided to go to Venus too. Let's go. Yeah, then you go ahead and do that. How do I ask my guys for permission again? They're literally listening right now. You could just ask them, can I go? Um, and they'll tell you, yes, you can or no. Wait a minute. Ooh, some of you should go swimming in the ocean with rainwater. Like that, going to Sirius with rainwater. Oh, that's how we do it. I woke up in some sort of dream and I sat up from my sister's bed. But that's not where I slept. Then I saw a silhouette of like a guard with a stick and he looked like a draconian. You were seeing a spirit guard. Yeah, you're seeing some of your spirit team right there with you. Yeah, spiritual protectors. You got a message and it was right beside your sister's bed. You know that that thing is there for you and your sister. And Zara, you good. You good, Zara. Just they keep saying check up on yourself. Right now you're supposed to be checking up on yourself because there's nobody around checking up on you. Check up on yourself and keep this sovereignty. You're in a sovereign mode right now, Zara. So that means you are sovereign being it's like you you got you you got you no matter what happens you're like i got me and i'm gonna take care of me and i'm taking care of me so i can take care of everyone yeah that's the mode you're in right now you good you good i know you're leaving i'm sorry if i'm keeping you a question but do i have any missions at the moment because i feel lost as in like not knowing what to do or focus on do you know what i should do you're supposed to be reading a lot right now you're in research mode right now you're supposed to be just getting information. If you notice you're reading a lot and researching a lot, such as them websites that they're sending you, it's like they're just they're landing upon random information that you need exactly. What have you been thinking about? And then you start reading about it. You in that mode right now, naive. Right now is research mode and gaining information mode. And for some of you, like um, my sister right here is saying, I had a dream a few days ago and I am not sure if it was past life memories or if i was an astral travel with the boy spirit or if i was 
still family from wherever, but at some point felt like I was a babysitter, but at the other moment felt like he was my son. That's life memories. Traveling to get past life memories. There you go. You're going to put the puzzle piece together. You're going to be able to understand fully about it, but you get some in the astral and some in the physical and you get understanding of it. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. You said. Besna, I do have a, a box. It's right there. Do you see it right there? My, I call it my treasure box. My, oh, excuse me, confirmation. Damn. That's my enchanted enchanted box i put my very sacred stuff in there of course naif i got you okay y'all let's head out on tuesday we'll do divinations okay so just as we did now and we're uh it's like a little checkup I, that's why I, I noticed like tuesdays is more like check up and talk about everything as an agent in your mission and thursday is more astral traveling and and going out about places okay so we will we'll do different things on different days but you're gonna notice tuesdays is like that and thursdays is like that this is so fun, y'all. We're only like just getting started, eh? Look how hot it is. And like how, look how amazing everything is right now. And we're just getting started. <laughs> oh, you guys are so welcome. And thank you guys. Oh, you sent me a snap? Okay. I <laughs> love you guys so much. <laughs> All right. I'll be seeing y'all. If I go live, I'll see y'all later. If not, I'll be seeing you guys in the astral tonight. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. See you later.